Hi, I'm Chris Wardlaw for Auto by Tell, and today we're reviewing the 2014 Volkswagen Tiguan. Now there's a little confusion over how exactly to pronounce this vehicle's name. So I looked it up and it is Tiguan. It's not Tiguan, it's not Tiguan, and don't try to Google it because you're not gonna know how to spell it. And maybe that's one reason why Volkswagen doesn't sell any of these things. Now, just to give you an example, last year, for every 10 Honda CRVs that rolled into an American driveway, Volkswagen moved one of these, and there's probably a good chance it went into a rental car fleet instead of to an actual consumer. Now, having spent a week schlepping my family around in this vehicle, running all over LA, I'll tell you this, I would buy this with my own money, except for one very important thing, and we're gonna get to that in just a little bit. Now, as you can see, the Volkswagen Tiguan is never going to be the star vehicle in a remake of a Sir Mix-a-Lot video. Most of the visual largesse is concentrated over the front wheels, and while I genuinely like the way that this SUV looks, Volkswagen really needs to put another foot or so of sheet metal and greenhouse back here. Number one, to better balance the design. Number two, to fix the problem we're gonna talk about in just a minute. Now the thing to remember though is, is that this vehicle is built in Germany. It was originally designed to cater to European customers who have very cramped, tight confines in which to operate. And it's very easy to park, I'll give it that. But if you are parking in a parallel space next to a curb, you gotta be very careful with these wheels. These are the 18 inch aluminum wheels that come on the SEL model and they bow out away from the sidewall. So if you're not careful against the tall curb, you're gonna scrape those wheels up and that's not gonna look good. Volkswagen installs its ubiquitous turbocharged two liter four cylinder engine in the Tiguan. Just like in other applications, it makes 200 horsepower, requires premium fuel, and the EPA says it'll get about 23 miles per gallon in combined driving. I actually did better than that at 23.3 miles per gallon, which if you know how cars fail to hit their EPA numbers these days is somewhat of a miracle. Anyway, good engine. Now there's a couple of things you want to keep in mind about this engine. Number one is, if you are a person who likes to ski or snowboard, you like to drive into the mountains, or you live someplace like Denver at elevation, this turbocharged engine does better in a thinner atmosphere, feels stronger, loses less of its vibrancy, less of its peppiness when you take it up into the mountains. The second thing to remember is that this engine's horsepower and torque curve is exceptionally broad. So let me give you an example. The peak torque of 207 pound-feet starts at just 1700 RPM and it's flat all the way to 5000 RPM. Then horsepower kicks in at 5100 RPM all the way to 6000 RPM. So what I'm basically saying is, is that except for right off the line, anytime you step on the gas, this thing's gonna feel pretty strong. Now because it is a fairly flat power curve though, it doesn't rush to speed. It's just a very steady stream of never ending power all the way to the next shift point. Now all versions of the Tiguan except for the base S model with front wheel drive come standard with a six speed Tiptronic automatic transmission with manual shift capability. There's two shift programs. There's a normal shift program and a sport shift program. Now the normal shift program is designed to upshift as soon as possible to help conserve fuel. What that does is it results in a little bit of hesitancy sometimes. Sometimes the shift transitions take a little while and I'm gonna tell you right now that that is a quality that drove my wife absolutely insane. Now to fix that, you can just shift it all the way down into sport mode. And what that does is it holds revs longer, it makes the shifts crisper, it gets rid of all that kind of weirdness down low in the rev range, but then the engine's revving higher and you are consuming more fuel. Now personally, neither mode bothered me much. I acclimated to it pretty easily but I will tell you that sport mode is a lot more fun. Now, on top of uh, the standard front wheel drive, you can get four motion all wheel drive in this vehicle. Uh, I recommend that if you are one of those folks who lives someplace where it snows a lot, or you do like to go to the mountains to do the skiing and snowboarding. Let's talk about the one reason you might not wanna buy a Volkswagen Tiguan. Cargo space. There's 23.8 cubes behind the rear seat, which is more than a mid-sized family sedan. And I love the fact that it's shaped like a big cube. It makes it really easy to stack things. But this compact folding stroller doesn't fit lengthwise. It has to be put in diagonally, and so that limits 
your choices when you're packing this vehicle. And I know that a lot of compact crossovers are purchased by young families who are just getting started, and that's probably not a good thing. If you fold the rear seats forward, you get 56.1 cubic feet, but again, still very small compared to a lot of the competitors. I'm gonna say it again, if Volkswagen just stretched this car by like a foot, they would resolve this problem. And then you'd have very few reasons to check this one off your list. Now there is one way the Volkswagen could make more trunk space, and that would be to move the rear seat forward a little bit but then you would encroach upon passenger space. And I mean, there's a lot of room in the back seat of this vehicle. You sit up nice and tall. You've got great thigh support. The, the way that the bottom cushion is shaped and the way that it feels is fantastic. The whole front seat back is padded, even down here, where typically there's some kind of a crossbar that could impact your shins. Tons of space under the front seats. I mean, you talk about a comfortable small SUV, and the SEL model's got this fantastic panoramic glass sunroof. The glass ends here, so everybody enjoys a very open and airy feeling. Now, the Tiguan's front seat is really comfortable, too. I tend to like to sit up really high, and it's got manual height adjusters for the front seats in all models except for the R-Line, which is the top of the line. If you buy that one, you get 12-way power adjustable front seats. But I really don't mind the manual adjustments, and I'm able to sit up really high in this car for a panoramic view of my surroundings. I've got clear sight lines all the way around. This tilt telescopic steering wheel has thumb rests in the 10 and 2 positions. It's wrapped in this nice smooth leather that makes the wheel glide in your hands as you're turning. And um, my test car's got the push button starting. Now it takes a while. You have to kind of push that button for more than just a couple of seconds to get the engine to fire. On several occasions I've pushed it. It sounded like it was starting and then it didn't. That's a little bit of an irritant, but I'm going to let it go. Soft upper door panels for resting my elbow. It's got a soft touch dash. And one of my favorite things about the comfort in this car is the center armrest. So this is the lowest mode here, but if you raise the seat, obviously it doesn't work anymore. So what you can do is you can ratchet it up and you can pull it forward. And now you got all day comfort. Now this car has uh, Volkswagen's touchscreen infotainment system. Um, it's got uh, navigation. Carnet Telematics is new for 2014. You get a free six month subscription and it's important because it includes something called automatic uh, collision notification. So that means if you're in a crash and the airbags deploy, the system will automatically through a paired Bluetooth phone, uh, reach out to emergency personnel to get people to the location of the accident as soon as possible. Okay, we're underway in the 2014 Volkswagen Tiguan, and earlier in the video, we talked a lot about the engine and transmission, so I just wanna cover a couple of things there. Number one, love the horsepower and torque uh, spread uh, from 1700 RPM all the way to 6000 RPM. The engine's making peak one or peak the other, and that produces fantastic linear acceleration. It doesn't necessarily feel fast, but it is. Um, the second thing is, is the six-speed automatic transmission has two drive modes. There's normal, there's sport. Sport uh, makes the uh, transmission shifts crisper and holds revs longer, but that has the effect of burning more gas. Um, whichever one you want to choose is up to you. Let's talk about the steering. It's electric steering in this vehicle, and this is a model of how electric steering systems should be done. It's very solid, firm, resolute, great on center feel. But then off center, you can fine tune the steering. It feels very natural, very linear as you're turning into a, into a corner. Steering wheel's wrapped in this smooth leather. If you shuffle steer like I do through really tight turns, it's gonna feel great in your hands. Love the steering in this vehicle. Should serve as a model to any engineer trying to improve their electric steering systems. The suspension tuning is also brilliant. So first of all, this car handles, well, it's not a car, okay, crossover SUV. You take it up into the mountains on some favorite twisty roads, it handles really well. Now it does have a tall center of gravity, uh, so you're gonna get you know, some roll. It's gonna feel a little bit tippy, especially because it's also on a short wheelbase. 
but it's exceptionally composed and with the 18 inch wheels and tires on the SEL model, you're gonna get really good grip, uh, surprising levels of handling on a twisty road with this vehicle and it makes it even more fun to drive. The best thing is that the capable handling does not come at the expense of ride quality. So the magicians at Volkswagen, I don't know how they do this, but they're able to create an absorptive suspension that soaks up all the nastiness at the road surface without bringing a bunch of impact harshness into the cabin at the same time that they're able to deliver decent handling. It is really a fantastic mix. Um, you know, you're not gonna wanna go autocrossing in this thing, obviously. And, uh, you know, I wouldn't call it a Volkswagen GTI necessarily, but you can credibly say that this is the GTI of crossover SUVs. Now it's true that the Volkswagen Tiguan is getting along in years and is probably due for replacement any day now, but this is still a really compelling small crossover SUV. There are three things you've got to keep in mind with this though. Number one, the small cargo space. That's pretty much a deal breaker if you've got a lot of stuff you want to carry. Number two, Volkswagen really could stand to improve the crash test scores on this vehicle. However, it's important to note that according to the Insurance Institute for Highway Safety, the Tiguan matches the Honda CRV and bests both the Ford Escape and the Toyota RAV4, and those are the heavy hitters in the segment. So if you're thinking about buying one of those because you think they're safe, this one's just as safe. The third issue you should be aware of is that this does require premium fuel, and around my neighborhood, that's like an extra 20 cents per gallon. Now, if none of these things bother you, you are gonna love this fun to drive little SUV. For Auto Bytel, I'm Chris Wardlaw, I'll see you right back here next time.